Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Florida. And today our question comes to us from Spellcaster1998. And Spellcaster1998 asks if I could do a vlog on the subject of the planes of existence. And Spellcaster1998 goes on to say that they feel as if they might be more strongly connected to a different plane than the one in which their primary consciousness resides, and could I comment upon this as well? And, of course, a vlog is a fairly short format for such a lofty subject, but we can get quite a bit in. And the first thing that has to be said about the planes of existence is that the concept of separate planes is very much a human one. And where you demarcate different separations is pretty arbitrary. They actually represent a continuum, which is generally thought of as stretching from the uh, the utmost material manifestation to the utmost spiritual manifestation, and different people demark them in different ways. The most common system is seven planes of existence, but you'll also find as few as three or four, and as many as twelve, or even nineteen or more. Uh, there are many different ways of looking at it, and all of these are basically human constructs on an existential reality. And I would compare it to a person's lifetime. When a person can be said to become mature, when they can be said to become middle-aged, when they can be said to become old, is a highly subjective thing, but as a society, we generally say certain years are uh, the time of maturity, the time of middle age, the time of old age, etc. But those ages are purely arbitrary. We have put them there to help our understanding. They have nothing to do with existential reality, and the planes of existence are the same way. The planes are actually there, of course, but how you describe them is to help you to understand them, and they are actually much more fluid. Having said that, the planes as I understand them, and I must of course come from my own background, are these. The physical plane, the emotional plane, the mental plane, the astral plane, the solar plane, the monadic plane, and the divine. And again, other systems have other ways of recognizing them, but the movement from physical to spiritual is usually the gist of it. And the way that I was taught is that our point of conscious reference is generally somewhere between the mental and the astral plane for the current point of humanity and society. And the way we can tell where we are is by what we can easily perceive. All the planes we've traveled through and mastered are easy for us to perceive. We can very easily perceive the physical, we can very easily perceive the emotional, we can very easily perceive the mental. We don't necessarily perceive everything about them, but we can perceive them. We know they're there. We don't have to work to have a knowledge that we can think. We don't have to work to have a knowledge that we can feel. Uh, these things are simply present. The planes we have not yet traveled through and mastered, we have to work to have any knowledge of. We know there's an astral plane, but you have to work to have an awareness of it and to be able to consciously interact with it. We know there's a solar plane, but again, we have to work very hard to gain access to what it has to offer, and so forth. And some people are a little bit farther along between the mental and the astral than others, and uh, some people are a little farther into the mental plane than others, and this is only natural. We are not all in quite the same place because we are individuals, and everyone has their own journey. The entire human species uh, is not in the same place at any one given time and each individual is basically in their own path. Some will be a little bit more developed in one plane or another. No two will be quite alike, and you'll see this reflected in the chakra system if you study the minor chakras. Some people will have much stronger development in certain chakras than others, which has to do with their experience in traveling through the planes of existence. Now, Spellcaster 1998 references feeling more strongly attached to a different plane than the one they find their consciousness in. And is this possible? Well, it certainly is possible that you might have a very strong feeling for a plane other than your primary point of consciousness, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I suspect that what Spellcaster 1998 is actually referencing is a feeling of not really being in the right place. And I don't know if that is exactly what this would be, but a lot of people have that feeling, and I tend to think it usually is because they're not quite in the right place yet. But if they keep working toward it, they will find it. But that's a different question. Getting back to the planes of existence, the journey of the soul through incarnation is a journey through these planes. And the farther you go in the planes, the more of the soul, the more of spirit, the more of deity is manifest in the physical. And 
Ultimately, the goal is not to leave the planes of existence, but rather to express spirit so perfectly in them that both the virtues of spirit and matter are fully actualized. So, that's what I would have to say about the planes of existence. I hope you find it interesting, and until next time, may you blessed be. Reverend Don, Super Omnibus of Incantations and Invocations for All Occasions. Mary Ann Kay and I created this massive compendium of magic and artwork for you to use in any way that you would like. There are literally hundreds of spells and hundreds of illustrations, which can be mixed and matched and used in many different ways. Check it out now at witchschoolstore.com.